Today, we're going to talk about how to make basic yeast bread. And you may be wondering why I'm wearing these long opera gloves. Well, I don't need those just yet, but when we take the bread out of the oven, these come in awfully handy. These are just simply barbecue gloves, by the way, in case you're wondering. But they will protect you. What you're going to need is you're going to need the following equipment. You're going to need a stand mixer, because that's how I do mine. You can do it by hand, though. You're going to need these two attachments for the stand mixer. You're going to need a measuring cup, preferably a two, two cup measuring cup, like this from Pyrex. Okay? Now, you're also going to need your scale, but I'll get to that in a moment. The first thing you need to do is you need to measure out your flowers for this. The flowers that we're going to be using today are an all-purpose white flour that's unbleached. We're also going to be using a red rolled wheat flour. We're also going to be using something called vital wheat gluten. We're going to use two tablespoons of brown sugar. Dark brown sugar, preferable. We're also going to be using generic canola oil. Two tablespoons for the bread, two tablespoons for the loaf pans, and one tablespoon for the pan in which we're going to let, let the bread rise. Stop it now. The other things you're going to need, you're going to need a way to let the dough rise. Temperature is very important when you're making a basic bread, whether it's yeast bread or whether it's sourdough, which is a whole nother ball game. Today we're just doing basic yeast bread. One way to do that is in our oven if you have a bread proofing cycle. Mine does have a bread proofing cycle, but there's also another way to do that, and it's called using a seedling heat uh, mat. I use this because I don't have to turn the oven on, it doesn't heat the house up, I can set my dough on top of it, and it will rise. It simply plugs in, it uses about 18 watts of power, and it keeps your dough at about 85 to 100 degrees max. So it's not going to melt anything, but it will keep the dough and it will make it rise perfectly. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to measure things out. And one of the things you're going to need when you measure things out is this. Because the way you measure things out for flour is like this. We're going to use four scoops, or four cups, rather, of the white flour. So how I do that is I do it this way. With the back of the knife, I level that off. This will, be, this will give you consistency in your bread. One. Two. Three. Oh, I forgot to tell you, this is for two loaves instead of one. Um, it takes just as much time to make two loaves as it does one, so it's economy. You can always freeze the second loaf when you're ready to use it. Just take it out of the freezer like the day before, and it'll fall out on your counter. So we've got that flour. Now, I told you we were using two other types of flour as well. The other flours that we're going to be using include some red rolled wheat which is flour that I got from the store that I ground up myself using excuse me using a coffee grinder like this one and I use one cup of that so here we go again take that cup make it level okay then of course put your flour away a little messy here <clears throat> The next thing I'm going to use is called Vital Wheat Gluten. This isn't the brand that I'm using right now. It's just the bag the brand came in that I ordered back during the beginning of the pandemic. Now I get it in bulk at Winco. It's basically Bob Mills Vital Wheat Gluten. Because there's not a lot of wheat gluten in the uh, flour that I put in first, the generic uh, all-purpose flour, <clears throat> this will make the bread rise. In addition to the yeast, which is always important to have the yeast when you're mixing up the bread. <laughs> Don't forget the yeast. I've done that before. 
and I get I wait an hour for the bread to rise and nothing happens and I'm thinking oh what's wrong well it's the yeast so this is bulk yeast I have more this is a measure that does exactly two tablespoons you use a tablespoon for each three cups of flour that you've got in there I've got six cups of flour in there so a two tablespoon measure will be perfect and just dump it in like that this can be put back in the fridge where I keep it and the next thing that we're going to put in there remember I told you about the brown sugar well two tablespoons of brown sugar and what we're going to do for right now is we're not going to put the dough hook on there yet because I want to mix this dough I want to mix this flour and all the other dry ingredients I put in there, I want to mix those together a little bit. Of course, it always helps if you plug in your stand mixer. Just on the stir cycle, nothing fancy. Just let it go for a few, a few seconds. Get it all mixed up. Turn that off. Take that. Put that over there. <laughs> The next thing we're going to do, this, this recipe you can either use water or you can do like I do and use almond milk. Almond milk is going to give it a little more protein. That red rolled wheat flour that I put in there, it gives it a nice texture, but it also gives it a lot more protein. The higher protein content in your bread, the better it is for you nutritionally. Your system will digest it faster and better, and it will also make it uh, less fattening because you know I know everybody goes oh don't eat carbs and stuff but you need carbs all right so first thing I'm going to do is turn my scale on this scale does either grams or ounces I have it set on grams right now and I'll switch it over to ounces for now okay I want to have at least 18 ounces which is a little more than two cups because I need my dough to be thoroughly immersed in this liquid but I'm not just going to pour it in there like that. I'm going to put this in the microwave for about mm, a little over, not quite 18 ounces. That's I need one pound, two ounces is 18. Oh, that'll be fine. It's a little bit over that. So we're going to stop here and I'll come back. Hi. Remember we just put this in the microwave and I did it for about 60 seconds. I didn't think he needed to see the microwave turning for 60 seconds. We all know what that works like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this into the bowl where we're going to mix our flour and I'm going to take this attachment off and I'm going to put on the dough mixing attachment, which is a dough hook. I'm going to go ahead and pour this in just like this. Look how messy that looks, but that's okay. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to add the two tablespoons of canola oil for this. Remember I said this is an exact measurement for two tablespoons, so if you have measuring spoons and don't have one that does two, you can just do two separate ones. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to close that, put this down in here, turn this on, and we're just going to put it on the slow speed again. And we're going to do this for about six to eight minutes until the dough forms and comes clean from the bowl and there's nothing on the side. So we're going to stop at this point and come back when that's happened because that's going to take about six or seven minutes. This is how the dough should look when it's time to take it out of the bowl. But what are you going to do when you take it out of the bowl? Well, I'm going to spread some flour onto the, te onto the countertop. I made this by simply drilling some holes in the top of a mason-type jar with this lid. You don't have to go out and buy anything expensive to do this. But this is the advantage. It just sprinkles it out like that. Give it a generous sprinkle there. Then undo this take the dough out it's going to be just a little bit sticky and you scoop it out with your hand don't be afraid of it this is the part that most people hate this is called kneading the bread with a k k 
K-N-E-A-D-I-N-G. Okay, you can see what's happening here. I'm just pushing against the dough with the palm of my hand or the base part of my hands and also moving it with my fingers as well. It's just... I'm going to do this for about six to eight minutes. And so rather than you just watching me there, we're going to stop the filming at this point and come back and show you the other things that we have to do after we finish this because this is just getting it ready for the first stage of rising. This is going to be a good dough. I can tell already just by my experience with my hands and how it feels. Uh, when you get to making more uh, yeast breads, you'll get a feel for it too and know that the yeast is probably working. And it is working and you can kind of feel those air bubbles in there a little bit. But this is important. You don't want to do this more than six to eight minutes. If you do, you're going to be over kneading it and the bread won't come out as good. So that's why I always do it about eight minutes. I'm looking at the time now, and I'm gonna do this one for about seven minutes. So, because I figure I've already done about a minute so far. So we're gonna stop the filming at this point and come back. All right, we're just about finished with the kneading process on this. As you can see, I keep sprinkling a little bit of flour on there to keep it from getting too wet. Uh, I'm going to use this for our next step, which is our, our um, rising bowl that we're going to let it rise in and also I'm going to do that with our loaf pans. I like the clear glass loaf pan. You can bake it any whether what other kind of loaf pan you have whether it's metal or ceramic or whatever. This is what works best for me though. So I'm going to finish this up in just a few seconds. Then what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to put it in this bowl. Well I don't just put it in there without anything. I put a little oil in there. Not a lot, but enough to coat this and the sides of the bowl. This is a technique you should be aware of because it's pretty easy. And most anybody can do this. I'm going to put about a cap. Okay, ready? The stuff that you see in the bottom of this bowl is for my hands because this has a, a, a texture from the, uh, remember that flour I put, the, the rolled red wheat flour? That's what you see in there. I'm going to roll this around the bottom in that oil, coat the sides of this. I'm going to put this on this way. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cover this, and I'm going to put it on that heating pad I was telling you about. And we're going to let that sit for an hour. And you'll see that it's a different, it'll be a completely spread out, and this bowl will probably come up to here or more, depending on how lucky we get with this. But we're going to stop filming for now because who wants to sit around and watch this for an hour okay so this is the part where you come back in an hour okay we're back here's what we're going to do next it's been about an hour now and i'm going to open this up you can see how that dough remember how small it was previously look at it now it really rose nicely this is what you want Let me set, this, whoa, set this over here and i'm going to take this out now because what I'm going to do, it's nice and light and airy. Feel that? You see that? It's deflating, but we want it to deflate because we're going to do something else with it. I'm going to sprinkle some flour onto the surface. And we are going to divide this up. And we're going to make it into two separate loaves. But first, we're going to do a little bit of kneading. Not as much as we did before. Maybe just a minute or two. So we get it down to where we want it to be. See that oil that's going to be absorbed in there? You do this with one hand or two hands or whatever is most comfortable for you. I don't know why people fear kneading. It's really good for your hands. And it doesn't hurt anything. Okay, so we've got this roughly punched down as they used to call it. I don't believe in punching, but anyway. What we're going to do is we're going to take this bench scraper and we're going to roughly cut it in half with that. There you go. Now, looks can be deceiving, so what we're going to do now is we're going to put it on the scale over here so that we get about the same amount of dough in each one. I have it on ounces previously, but I'm going to switch it over to kilograms. It's just easier to keep track of when you're doing this part. This has 670 grams. This half has... Let's 
this is going to be at zero, so I tear that out. 736 and 671. So this one is heavier than that one. So we need to take some of the dough from this. That's 645, 736. Maybe I took too much dough from that. Yeah, I think I did. That's 671. Took it from the wrong stack, actually. 736, 671. So I should have taken it from this one. Just a little pinch. 721, 7, 686, getting closer. Another little pinch from this one. Puts that down to 709. Puts that at 697. Another little pinch. 700. And we we'll put that on there. 702. I put that on there to be pretty close. 706, take it off. 705. Yeah, that's about what it's going to be for each load. It doesn't have to be any closer than that. 703, 704. Close enough for government workers, I say. Now, what you're going to do is take both your hands and you're going to kind of knead this just a little bit. But really, what you want to be doing is you want to be rolling this because you want to get into an elongated shape. One of the things I did while we were waiting for this to rise is I went ahead and, and oiled two loaf pans that you see here. That's why the white paper towel is in there. I used that to spread the oil around. Maybe about a half a cap of that oil that I used earlier for each pan, which is really just canola oil, because you don't want the bread sticking to that. We have another resting process that will last for about 30 minutes after I get this. And during that time, you're going to turn your oven on up to 375 degrees and preheat it until it gets up to, uh, until it gets up to 375. But you're going to wait until this has been rising for at least 30 minutes because it's going to rise again to each its own separate loaf. Some of this is just techniques you'll learn on your own, but you can kind of scoot the dough around and get it into a form you want it. You want it to be as tight as possible on the top because if you don't, it's going to look weird. It'll still taste good. It'll just look a little weirder. But that's what I'm doing here. These are techniques I actually learned when I started lear learning how to do sourdough bread, but they work for yeast breads as well in terms of forming your loaf. Now that's about as much loaf forming as I want to do on this one. I think it'll be good. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to put this in this loaf pan right here like that. I'm going to put the loaf pan on top of this heating pad that I was using earlier. Now I'm going to roll this one out a little bit and get it formed into another bread roll. And again, it's just playing around with the dough. Don't be afraid of it. You're not going to hurt it. You want to try to get a smooth, even top on there so that when it rises, it looks like the pictures you see. And we're going to put this one in this pan. And as you can see, they don't look the same. They're going to be a little bit different, but that's okay. I'm going to put these over here. I'm going to move this so you can see that. They're both in that pan. I'm going to cover it with a towel like this. And in 30 minutes, I'll come back and I'll pop those puppies in the oven. And now we're going to put them in the oven and let them bake for about 35 minutes. So I'm going to put the first one in this way, like this. Let's call the kitchen with the world's smallest oven. Okay, so you go like that. Don't do this once they get hot. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the world's smallest oven with the world's best barbecue mitts. And now we're gonna take the bread out of the oven because it's been 35 minutes. So the first thing we do is turn the oven off. And now, voila. These are the loaves of bread. 
putting it on a cooling rack. See how handy those gloves are? Don't burn myself. And there you go. Those are the loaves, the finished loaves. Now they will have to cool for about 30 minutes before I can dump them out of those pans. And the pans will be cool enough to just dump them right out. As you can see, good even striations, nothing. Good oven height. This is another reason why I like using the glass loaf pans, as you can see how much it rose and see how much how well it came out. I'm back. I know you were hoping you would never see my face again, but this is only to show you it's now time that I can easily pick up these loaf pans, turn them over, and see how gently that red bread comes right out. I'm going to set that up like that. We're going to do the same thing with the other pan. And voila, we have two loaves of bread. Now the thing we need to do is we need to let this cool even more before you actually cut into it. So this will probably be a, a while before we actually cut into the bread. But you can see how nice and even those evenly brown those, uh, loaves of bread came out. I usually put a kitchen towel underneath them just because of the moisture from the, um, from the oil in the pan. And that dries that out nicely without making the without making my bread soggy. Now one of these loaves will eat right away like within the next couple of days. The other loaf was going to be in the freezer. But guess what? It tastes just as good when you thaw it out. And that's how you make yeast breads.